All right, so in the last video, um, we, we figured out how to calculate the second derivative, right, d squared y dx squared, so we can get concavity. We did a particular example. We're able to find the intervals where this particular curve is concave up, concave down. Now, we also know the first derivative, right? And so we know, we know a few things here. We actually know that, let's think about it, um, at minus 3, At minus 3, y prime is 0, okay? And that, so that minus 3, this is a horizontal tangent, okay? We have a horizontal tangent there, okay? At 3 over 5, at 3 over 5, we have a vertical tangent, okay? But the other thing I can do here is I can actually, I can figure out the sine of dy dx on the, on the intervening inter intervals, right? Um, if x is bigger than 3 over 5, or t rather, if t is bigger than 3 over 5, everything is positive, okay? If t is less than 3 over 5, the denominator is negative. Uh, the numerator will remain positive in this interval, so we have negative. Um, below minus 3, top and bottom are both negative. So actually we know now that, um, our graph, you know, we're thinking again of y in terms of x, we should be uh, increasing, decreasing, increasing. We've got to think a little bit about what that means, but we'll, we'll put it together. Uh, we do have to be careful here that um, this represents the relationship between x and y and not necessarily t. So we're not thinking about direction of travel along the curve um, for t, but we can do that, right? Um, for concavity, well, we, we have, you know, we just have that one point, 3 over 5. 3 over 5. Uh, well, it's not exactly a point of inflection because it corresponds to a, a vertical tangent, but we'll, we'll see what it looks like nonetheless. Okay, so it's concave up, concave down. Now, we do have to finally bite the bullet and calculate our coordinates at these two points, right? Um, x, x at minus 3 is going to be uh, 45, okay, plus 18 plus 4. Oh, gee, that's a big number, right? Uh, 49, 59, um, 59 plus 8 gives me 67. Uh, y, y at minus 3, I get uh, 9 minus 18, okay, minus 1. So I get, uh, that's minus 19 plus 9, I get minus 10 y is minus 10, okay? All right, we can do that. Um, it's going to be hard to fit that on the graph, but it's there, okay? Bear with me. x at 3 over 5. I get 5 times 9 over 25 minus 6 times 3 over 5 plus 4, okay? So that is 9 over 5 minus 18 over 5, 4 is 20 over 5, so that's going to give me 11 over 5, so slightly less than 2. Y at 3 over 5, I'm going to have 9 over 25 plus 6 times 3 over 5, so 18 over 5 minus 1. Okay, so all over 25, that's 9 um, plus 90 minus 25 over 25. 99 minus 25, so 74 over 25, slightly less than 3, right? So what do we get? We go out x, 1, 2, y, 1, 2, 3. So it's slightly less than 2 and slightly less than 3. Somewhere around there, we have a vertical tangent. Okay? Now, way, 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 way out, t equals minus 3 corresponds to this point, 67. You know, let's just say it's kind of, it's out here somewhere. Okay, 
Somewhere out there, there's a vertical tangent. Okay? Now, we have to kind of think about what happens. Maybe you have to plot a few more points to think about it. But for negative values of t, we can see that t at minus 3 is here. Um, we're going to get, we can calculate, say, at 0, right? When t is equal to 0, we're at minus 1, 4. We're kind of out about there, right? You can plot a few points. So you can convince yourself that what's going to happen is we're going to make our way in this way, right? Um, and so and that fits with the concave up, right? So for here's t is 3 over 5. So we're going to be concave up. And also, right, for t between minus 3, over, minus 3 and minus 3 over 5, we're decreasing, yeah? And the thing is, here's minus 3, here's minus 3 over 5. We think we should be going, you know, that way. But, you know, it just so happens that just because t is increasing doesn't mean x is necessarily increasing, right? Um, so we actually get something like that, right? And then we hit a minimum, and we start increasing again, right? Like that, stays concave up. We hit that vertical tangent, right? Um, and we should be increasing once we pass the vertical tangent, increasing and concave down. So increasing, we need to exaggerate this a bit to get to that vertical tangent, right? Kind of exaggerate that. Okay. So now we get something that looks like that. Okay. So we, we get that sort of behavior. Um, and I guess the other thing that you might want to work out, I mean, what does the long-term behavior look like, right? Um, what happens as t goes to plus or minus infinity? Well, for very large values of t, whether positive or negative, we can see that, um, you know, y, y over x, y over x will be basically 1 over 5 once t is large, right? We ignore the, the lower order stuff. So actually, we expect that... Um, we should get something that kind of has a slope. You know, we approach kind of an asymptote with the slope of one over five there and also there. So it kind of goes off like that, goes off like that. Okay. So we can actually start getting an idea of, of what these parametric curves look like um, by computing first and second derivatives using parametric calculus.